Hi guys. Well, you will be shocked to hear it is another gray, gloomy, drizzly, depressing day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this gloomy Wednesday morning, July 21st, 2021. And I just did a kind of a broken record rant on uh, electric vehicles, which you can find elsewhere. But uh, since I couldn't decide between that story and this one from uh, the good old Guardian, we, you just, it's your lucky day, you get two chronicles of the collapse, where we're going to hear from, uh, I guess she's actually an entomologist, you know, someone who studies insects. And uh, this headline from the Guardian titled, Top U.S. Scientist on Melting Glaciers. This is an entomologist view on uh, melting glaciers. Quote, I have gone from being an ecologist to a coroner. And this is Diana Six. Her name is Diana Six. Um, you know, looking at, I'm sure she spends most of her time studying the insect apocalypse. She is an entomologist at the University of Montana who has spent the last 30 years researching how bark beetles are decimating pine forest, but a constant haunting <clears throat> depression has taken over her life. Yes. Uh, okay, to six, the climate crisis is not just decimating glaciers and life on Earth. It is taking her identity with it. Okay, so this is Diana Six talking uh, about melting glaciers in particular uh, and the state of the planet and what that means for life on Earth. Take it away, Diana Six. <clears throat> Quote, I don't think people realize that climate change is not just a loss of ice. It is all the stuff that is dependent on it. The ice is really just the canary in the coal mine. To have 97, 98 degrees in Glacier National Park for days on end is insane. This is not just some fluke. There are many years, you know, recently, there are many years where the snow is gone so early that you just don't see it in the mountains and water getting that warm is absolutely devastating to fish and algae. Life doesn't just deal with this. When I went up Glacier with my students a few weeks ago, the flowers were curling up. At some of the lower elevations, glacier lilies were shriveled. Lupins did not even open. The flowers should extend for another three weeks and they are already gone. Any insect or birds that depend upon them, like bees or hummingbirds, are in trouble. Their food is gone. Bird populations have just baked. There have been total losses of a lot of baby birds this year. You see these ospreys and eagles sitting on top of the trees in their nest, and those young, they just can't take the heat. Year after year of that, and you lose your birds. Huh. People seem to think of extinction as some silent, painless statistic. It's not. You look at birds, and can no longer find, you look at birds that can no longer find fish because the fish have moved too far offshore. They are emaciated. They're starving to death. 
we are at the point that there is nothing untouched. <clears throat> I'm also an artist. I recently finished a 10-week art course called Identity in America, <clears throat> where the instructor made us use a medium we had not worked with before because he felt we could not go back to our old habits. I ended up drawing myself morphing from being an ecologist to the guys who walked around during the plague to bring out the bodies. <clears throat> when I was forced to actually confront my identity, I realized that I am no longer doing what I thought I was. My whole life has been documenting how life works, how we can conserve species that are in trouble. I was no longer cataloging life and finding ways to prevent ecosystems from reaching tipping points, I had actually hit my own tipping point. Somewhere along the way, I had gone from being an ecologist to a coroner. I am no longer documenting life. I am describing loss, decline, death. And that is what is accounting for my kind of overwhelming sense of grief. This is what really brought me home to me that my entire job has changed. I don't like my new job, but I can't quit. Even if I quit being a professor and doing research, I am always going to be a coroner now. <clears throat> When I started work, you know, about 30 years ago, she's talking about here, when I started work, I did not think about climate change. It was far enough back that people were still kind of wondering, is it really happening? Then pretty early in my career as a professor, I realized I had to incorporate climate change into most of what I was doing. These tree-killing bark beetles I study have always had outbreaks. That's not anything new. But when mountain pine beetles developed this most recent outbreak, it was so far out of the norm in size and severity, we could not ignore that. I would walk through these forests in almost everything was dead. When you see a beetle kill 70 acres of trees across North America, you just have to change your research questions. Uh, obviously, that was 70 million, not 70 acres. When you see a beetle kill 70 million acres of trees across North America, you just have to change your research questions my focus had to shift from the beetles to how we can help our forest sur survive this. You have to come at these systems from a completely different direction now. We are coming at things all wrong. Trying to save a species by putting it in a zoo or replanting trees. But if you are not going to the root cause of the problem, it's still going to happen. That's not to say that if we didn't just get our act together and make some major changes, we could not save some of this. We just cannot do it one species at a time. Amen, uh, Sister Diana Six, for being brave enough to being the latest scientist to uh, just uh, pull the hopium out. You know, more and more scientists uh, are coming around to Diana Six's opinion that that we're done for
that we're done for. Uh, so you might as well accept the truth with a capital T, this planet is done for. Stick a fork in it, it's done. You have to accept this truth on a cellular level and figure out what you are going to do to enjoy the rest of your life on this dead planet while you still can. And with that, we're going to wrap up the second collapse chronicle of the day. And what do I need to do? I need to go put two strings of solar-powered uh, little party lights on my new kitchen. And I really, really appreciate everybody, uh, all my kind supporters who uh, sent in donations to help me build my brand new better kitchen for the hip camp. And we're going to string solar-powered lights on it. Don't tell me I'm not saving the planet by putting a bunch of strings of lights, made in China lights, that came over here on a cargo ship on my new kitchen. Come see us at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Bye, guys. All right, let's go put our Save the Planet solar lights from China on our new kitchen, little dog. Bye, guys.